So thank you all very much. My name's Rob Moss. Um, I'm the co-founder and president of Seizure Tracker. Um, I'm also the father of a son with tuberous sclerosis complex. Uh, this is a diary sheet that we were handed in 2006 as we were prepping uh, for surgery and our son's seizures kept increasing um, month by month. In 2007, his seizures were practically doubling every month and we prepped him for surgery. Uh, but we were having these discussions with our physician and changing medications all the time just using a single sheet of paper that my wife and I were trying to keep notes on of all the medications we were, cha we were changing at the time. So we'd go into his doctor's appointments, um, hand this sheet of paper over and possibly even all our notebooks and then spend about a half an hour discussing what was changing in our son's seizure activity. So this is where we're at in 2022. Um, uh, where we should be able to collect data electronically and then visualize it in a way that's standardized, that we can go in and have that 30 minute conversation in five minutes, and then spend more time talking about therapies that might um, uh, be more effective. So Seizure Tracker was launched in 2007. We have over 32,000 global users and um, over 3 million events logged. It's the largest database of patient reported outcomes in the world. Um, and it was built for my son initially. So um, the idea here was that we want to empower ourselves as initially as a, us as a family, but then as the community to collect uh, more accurate data and then communicate that data in a, in a better way. So I'm going to run through just a little bit about the user interface of Seizure Tracker and then um, uh, we have a table out there. I'm happy to talk about it more. And then I want to talk about a little bit more about how this data is being used. So currently, Seizure Tracker is based on a uh, calendar navigation. So you can create an account online, um, log into your account, click on days, add seizures and other surrounding information. This is the control panel page. So you get right away a data visualization of seizures that have been entered, and then all of the therapies that are currently active, sort of a, as a quick view that you've entered into the system. So clicking on a date, you'd come to a seizure logging page. Um, you can uh, uh, log seizures, but then also other types of information that's associated with a specific date and, and possibly time. So we include a bunch of tools that are on the website, um, uh, including rescue medication and um, uh, an appointment tool, so if you're making appointments with doctors or, or therapists, you can actually log them in here. We have a contact manager that you can actually take notes of phone calls you've had and, and mark those with um, times and dates. Um, uh, we have the, the seizure logging itself is broken down into four sections. We have a header section that allows you to record seizure types, the length, the time, and then you can flag seizures, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, but in, in recording that type of data, we're able to then visualize that data in a specific way. So this is a, a seizures by time of day. We launched this chart um, and right away started getting user feedback about how this was guiding therapy decisions and actually just by adjusting medications are able to get better seizure control by, by switching up how they're dosed by time of day. And this is seizure by type. So if we can enter in that data in a meaningful way and look at it across time, we're not only using seizure counts anymore, we're looking at seizure severity or seizure type and looking at how those therapies impact those different seizure types. The other sections of the, the, the diary itself are the triggers. So we, we went out and we collected all of the paper diaries that existed and then standardized how um, those were included into the seizure tracker system. And we, we were inclusive, so we added as many as we could, and you can go in and just checkbox these, these values um, when you're entering in diary information. Um, there's a, a trigger section, a description section, um, and a post-event section, and each of those sections has some customizability so you can enter in your own values in as well. 
And then um, other data points we collect that relate to date include uh, medication levels, and we have a diet tool, and hormonal shifts. So you're able, every piece of data that you put into Seizure Tracker in this, in this format can be visualized and looked at against seizure activity. This is the chart that comes from that. So you've entered that data in when you view these charts online through the reports or the user interface. It's interactive, so you can roll over that and really drill down on that data. Um, so one of the philosophies, I think, with collecting better data is having access to how we record the data. And initially, we were writing everything on in notebooks and uh, restaurant napkins and um, we really wanted to make that as easy as possible. So initially, we, we created these paper diaries that you could print out on the website and then log in the paper diary. And those paper forms matched the uh, online form. So you could do just check boxes. And our, our, our son's um, babysitter, who was 14 at the time, would be logging our son's seizures through these paper diaries. And then when we were preparing for doctor's appointments, we'd just add those all into the website really quick. Well, um, our son started having nocturnal seizures uh, in um, 2010, and I think the iPhone 3 came out with a light and a camera on it, and we decided to then move into the mobile app space. And the, the seizure tracker recorders are act or uh, mobile apps are actually seizure recorders. So you press two buttons, and you can be timing a seizure, videotaping a seizure, and then we have a rescue medication and VNS magnet swipe tool on there that you can press the button saying you've administered those or you've swiped your magnet, and it records that, but then resets the timer to alert you when at a predetermined time of when you should be doing that again. So in, in the case of like a status seizure, it defaults, uh, the timer for rescue medication defaults to five minutes, but you can set it at any time you want, and then it just repeats that timer it makes an alert when you move through there. So the Apple Watch has a phone, or a, a, the, Apple, <laughs> the Apple app has a watch component to it, so you can actually record from your watch everything except for the videos in the same way. And then we have the, an Alexa skill that you can actually use any Alexa-enabled device and record hands-free by, by voice, and that, um, Initially, it was just seizure activity, and then recently, we pushed out the rescue medication and um, VNS magnet swipe tool into that. So the whole idea is we're collecting this data, and we, um, we, we need to provide it, not only for ourselves to understand how things are changing, but then to our care providers. Um, so we created a really robust reporting system within Seizure Tracker, so you can create now reports for any time length um, from a start date to an end date, um, and, and they include all the data that you've entered in. So I, I apologize, this is a small report, but um, it includes all the data visualizations that we can um, include, and then you, every textual piece of data, you can de decide to include or exclude. Now, these are dynamic reports, meaning every time someone hits this, uh, a URL for a report you've created, it goes to the database and it pulls out that report criteria and recreates it. This is really good when you're thinking about, like, uh, for schools, let's say, if you want to create a pre-report or a report for a 12-month period in the future, you can actually recruit, uh, uh, create a report, share the link to your report, and then anyone can access that report through that 12-month period. And again, in the interest of being able to share it easily, um, we created what we call the valet management system. It's a, a way for users to come to the system, create a management account, and accept valet keys from basic user accounts. So as a basic user, you can go to your valet keys, share a key by email with, with a physician, or um, if you're in a managed care situation, you could, care, um, you could share it with your care manager, and they can um, then access and record the same way you would be recording through your, your um, web interface. Those keys, you get to set different access levels, too. So you can come in and um, let people log or just view or just create reports, and then you can go back to their valet key and adjust that, those access levels as well. 
In the same vein, we just um, launched last year into um, Epic in our EHR dashboard. So we wanted a way for clinicians to be able to get direct access within the clinic workflow. So Seizure Tracker now um, is available. If, if you use Seizure Tracker, you can talk to your doctors about it. We are um, integrating through Epic. We, are, we have an app that's listed on their app orchard, and it's a pretty simple integration, but then you're able, the doctor or um, clinician is able to just go into your uh, EHR account and click on a button that says Seizure Tracker, and this report comes up. They're also able to store that data, so we provide summarized data there that can be stored into what Epic calls flow sheets, and then they can um, put that into the EHR. Um, Dr. Chez is gonna be talking about action plans today. Um, I, I uh, would be remiss in, in not mentioning ours, but um, uh, when our son was having these status seizures um, at night, they were nocturnal and we'd had a care plan that we'd print out and it was a Word document. And we'd administer rescue medication and then we'd run and get the care plan and we'd lay the, the syringe that we used to administer the rescue medication and the care plan right next to him. If we administered a second rescue medication, we'd be calling 911 at the same time. It's a really good way to communicate the needs that you've talked about with your physicians prior to an emergency happening. So um, uh, I encourage everyone to be creating action plans and really thinking about preparing for those emergencies prior to them happening. Seizure Tracker pre-populates our action plan. So data you enter into Seizure Tracker also populates into the action plan. It's also dynamic, so you can um, view it on your phone or uh, print a PDF of it at any time from the website. In 2014, um, we were, the years previous to that, we were getting asked a lot about doing research um, and uh, we'd go to professional conferences and everyone would, who knew about the size of our data set would ask if we would do research. And we really hesitated on um, using the data set for research because our, our goal and our mission is really to improve that communication set between patients and care providers. So uh, being asked over and over again, finally in 2014, we put a survey out to our population and asked um, what their feelings were about uh, participating in research and 98% of them said they wanted us to share their data if it was de-identified. And we took that as a mandate to start building tools to integrate our database with other databases, but also um, we worked with NIH at the time to do uh, 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 ethical way of de-identifying uh, de and sharing our data from Seizure Tracker and building other data share tools. So one, um, one of the tools is, uh, a, as a data share partner, people can come to us um, as Seizure Tracker and ask us to look at specific populations in Seizure Tracker. And this is a um, relationship we have with the Tuberous Sclerosis Alliance where um, we have live content on Seizure Tracker that um, uh, gets pushed out every month and updates real time or in real time how therapies are being used, seizure uh, type prevalence, and population information, but it's public. It's on Seizure Tracker, and you can go and look at these populations. We, um, uh, Dr. Porter has mentioned, and I think Kelly Nutt mentioned, uh, the Natural History Database will, uh, see, um, the Tuber Sclerosis Alliance also has a Natural History Database, and we link Seizure Tracker data directly into that Natural History Database and promote their study through this, this interface. Um, working with industry as well, um, we have a way that people can link directly to our database and exchange data in real time. We have APIs um, that, that are basically rules for interacting with our database. And an example of that in an industry partnership is uh, with Neuropace. So this is um, uh, the responsive neurostimulator. They uh, are able to invite um, people with RNS uh, to share their seizure tracker data into the NeuroPACE or RNS database. And then they feed that data back and overlay it against the RNS uh, intracranial EEG data. So again, like you're playing an active role in helping 
understand the differences between what are actionable seizures or clinical seizures and intracranial EEG seizures, and then complementing that uh, discussion with your physicians. I mentioned the de-identified data export. So um, it's been exciting once we, we uh, took that initiative to start uh, using the seizure tracker data uh, for research, um, what the interest has been. So we talk a lot about seizure detection devices. There's been a lot of work in the community to understand seizure cycling um, and how seizures could be predictive, or you could, there's a predictive nature to seizures in some people, and there's been a lot of studies about, and, and being able to identify those cycles um, with intracranial EEG data, but also less invasive data like seizure diaries. So we've been working with groups um, internationally to look at that, and can we use diary data for uh, forecasting seizure risk? And um, in that, we also collaborate with uh, uh, institutions and industry uh, to, to uh, do study management, where we can do multi-center studies or institutional-based studies from Seizure Tracker and help with recruitment, and then provide ways to export data directly from Seizure Tracker. This is all user-controlled or patient-controlled, so you have the right to share your data and with whomever you want um, and however you want it. And that's part of the, the, the philosophy we have is we're stewarding this data t for you to be able to use any way you want to use it. So um, one of the things we notice personally as a family is that we don't measure success in therapies by just seizure counts. And one of the biggest things that we had a problem with is um, uh, when, they, when we would be asked about therapies and their efficacy, we were never asked about the impact it had on us or um, uh, our son's sister or you know, the other aspects of our son's life that weren't just about seizures. So um, uh, we started this initiative um, focused on quality of life and then really defining that by um, how we value quality of life and what's important to us, and then really developing a matrix of um, uh, using seizure tracker population information to compare that to what uh, quality of life items are important to us. So the idea is then we can build a continuous, little, continuous quality of life measurement tool within Seizure Tracker, compare that alongside therapies and seizure activity, and port that all together into the reports. Um, the, the Seizure Tracker data is unique in, a, in that we collect timestamps and dates. Um, and typically lengths of seizures. So there's three data points that allow us to evaluate data differently than, than what is commonly done with just seizure counts. So one of the things we're doing in the research and, and these population exports is evaluating how seizures cluster together. And as you know, with some of the um, current rescue medications that came out onto the market, they're uh, prescribed for acute repetitive seizures, seizure clusters, basically. And they had a set definition of what seizure clusters looked like. And what we didn't understand was how they can do that and not individualize, individualize that definition. So we set out to create what we call cluster calc, which is using those time and date stamps and uh, length of seizures and defining what a cluster looks like individually. So you can have a better idea of talking with your physician um, about when to use rescue medications um, within the setting of a, a seizure cluster. And this is really exciting. We have a co collaboration with Boston Children's Hospital. Um, SeizureViz actually takes uh, export seizure tracker data directly from the website, de-identifies it, and then we look at um, uh, therapy efficacies. So we can visualize a population, how those therapies are being used in the population, and then evaluate what their efficacies are. This can be ported directly into the EHR, um, the clinical workflow, and then we can actually try to spread that clinical knowledge out across the care industry and. Um, 
and that all of that knowledge base that we collect in these epilepsy centers, hopefully we can share that with and make um, good care accessible into those underserved populations. And uh, we're about to launch our translation tool. So your tracker is uh, currently only available in English, but we just got funding and are well on our way to pushing out uh, multiple languages. So hopefully uh, by the end of the summer, you'll see at least two more languages in Seizure Tracker. This is my son, he's 18. This is his dog, uh, Mindy. I was um, kind of excited to listen to Charles's talk when we were going out to raise funding for Mindy. Um, my wife and I went out and we bought our running outfits and we were gonna do a 5K run fundraiser to raise money and um, we got about halfway up the block and decided that was not the way we were gonna raise money. So <laughs> I don't know how you do a marathon, but um, so, so uh, thank you all very much. It's an honor to be able to talk here. It's an honor to be able to, um, to listen to the stories and be a part of uh, an environment that empowers us to change. And um, thank you very much. I'll answer any questions. Great, are there any questions? Just raise your hand and the mic runners will come to you. How many, how many of you guys keep a, a seizure diary um, that is, uh, well, how many of you keep a seizure diary at all? Okay, how many give, keep an electronic diary? Okay, I can kind of see most of you <laughs> see a bright light that maybe I should go into. <laughs> uh, how about a paper diary? Okay, okay, nice, nice. Any questions? I can't, I can't really see. Now I, now I understand why all the speakers no. are like this when they're doing it, but... Shout out if you have a microphone in your hand. Okay, I see one. Just start talking. If you get a mic, just go for it. Rob, I just want to thank you for putting that together. I don't use it because I'm a geek and I built my own system. <laughs> At one point, I actually had an app that you guys have integrated that functionality. I had VNS timer running, and you guys added that in, and that I immediately took mine out of the store because you guys had added it in. There was no reason for competition there. I appreciate the work that you have put into this because it took every aspect of tracking that we had ever done as a family. Uh -huh. You mentioned specifically uh, school and being able to see patterns of seizure activity. And we had a very similar situation where we had seizures occurring at school and we modified medications based upon mm -hmm. pharmacokinetics so that it would eliminate that or at least push it off outside of the school time. And I don't know if everybody grasps the importance of this when we're talking about what does our history look like in our disease? What does, I mean, you can't have a response to something and say this medicine is working or not working if we can't track that. Yeah. Data is the importance here. We're talking about research over the last couple of sessions. If we can't, as a community, give data back into it, when we're talking about this specifically, we're talking about numbers in SUDEP, immediately before this, we don't have enough information. Well, that's because we don't have enough counting. And mm -hmm. every time somebody enters something into your database and you can export that into research, that's one more data count. And those data points are important, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's, it's worth mentioning too and looping back to the, the cycling idea. When we collect those data points, it empowers us as individuals too. We were actually medicating uh, or seeing cycles in our son that we were able to sort of predict when he'd have these status seizures that required intervention. And we started actually treating prior to a seizure, which is sort of unheard of. So we were doing doses of rescue medications to try to stop the seizure from occurring. We would never have been able to do that unless we were collecting data and can see those cycles um, and collecting surrounding information. So it real, I think um, it, it really, thank you, by the way, for your comments. It empowers us individually to take a little more control, but it also empowers more uh, uh, our care providers more to be able to make um, better decisions. Yeah, I'll echo that too. I think we would bring in paper diaries all the time and the doctors be like, meh, and not look at it. So I think Rob and his, his team have done a lot of work in that area. This question right here. Yes, I think, thank you. We use, utilize Caesar Trekker as well. I don't think I realize that all the, <laughs> the options available online, it mm -hmm. appears that the online version is a little bit more advanced than the app. Do you mm -hmm. have plans to 
incorporate some of that stuff? It looks like more reporting is available online. That's yeah, that's a great question. So um, up until a year and a half ago, our website was not real usable on tablets or mobile devices, and um, it got redesigned, so it's fully scalable. So you can actually go to your browser and use the website um, to enter in all of that information on a tablet or a mobile device pretty easily now, where you couldn't do that as easily before. But the apps, we're really staying focused on them being seizure recorders and not cluttering that UI to go in on, and really do what you need to do when a seizure is happening. Um, and that's sort of been our focus with the apps, but then bringing the, the web UI back into the usability into the tablet and mobile space. So to use that, you can definitely, uh, if you're on iPhone or on Android, just bookmark or put an icon on your, your desktop, remember the password, log in right away, and use all the same functionality. Thank you. Great. So um, there is a seizure tracker exhibit table right out here. So you guys want to see or learn any more, you can. And thank you, Rob, for yep. being here. Thank you.